lost my best friend to 23 She left her body and hovered above me I saw no shadow, I looked around Searched every building and home that I found I saw no shadow, but felt a glow The warmth inside me kept me afloat I felt like heaven and found my bones And gave me comfort when I feel alone Now you're gone, I'm alone I guess it's time to get better Through the pain, I will go alone If I fall My best friend to 23 She left her body and hovered above me Dying again and again I went through hell Instead of death But I keep fighting with each living breath I saw no way out From where I stood Felt like the fire had burned me for Now you're gone I'm alone I guess it's time to get better What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the Aggressively Average English Podcast. Uh, we got a special guest for you guys tonight. You might know him as Creek Fishing Adventures. So, uh, yeah, there's probably some adventure tonight. We're going to talk about creek fishing, obviously, but also probably the adventures, right? So <laughs> I think we'll get into it. So please welcome John Dalton. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great. Glad to be on here. Dude, we're so excited to have you because uh, Creek Fishing Adventures, I got to say, probably outlines my entire youth. Like, who who is a child was not just like, where's a creek? And you're like magnetized to it. And maybe you weren't fishing. Maybe you're just like splashing around in it. You know, you, you're climbing trees by it. You fell into it. Your mom yelled at you, that kind of thing. But we've all been having Creek Fishing Adventures forever. So, like, I, I love the name first of all, and we're going to get into it all today. We'll spend some time on it. And I think we're all going to learn a lot from you because you're doing a lot of multi-species stuff. And we definitely, we love that game. So I'm excited for it. And again, thanks for the time, man. So we're going to dive in here in just a second. Oh, Paul's here too. Hi, Paul. How you doing, man? Great. Cool. Uh, hey, just so you guys know, one of us or both of us may disappear during this show. So I, I don't want to freak you guys out. But if you're <laughs> in the lower Michigan region, you probably know what we're going through right now. And if you're not, it is torrential downpour in the form of icicles that is followed by lightning and thunder. So if you've never seen an ice storm, which to me is like that should be a sci-fi made for TV movie. Like that should happen. Like ice, geostorm, ice storm. And uh, power's been going out all around the place. So if we cut out, we'll try to pop back in and hopefully John doesn't have to run the show. Can you run the show, John? Like if we, if we peace out, is that cool? Pretty stable down here. So the internet's doing all right. I don't know. <laughs> all right. So it'll be John and Chaz. <laughs> yeah, it'll be John and Chaz for the show. Oh, man. All right, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us again for another Wednesday Live. As always, the show is sponsored by Monster Bass, as well as some of our other favorite partners on the channel. We got Busby, we got Akuma, and P.S. talking about Akuma. Soft Steel Line, still on sale. If you guys want Eminent Braid, go get it for 75% off. And if you want to use our code to Soft Steel or Fish Lab, it's AAA 2523. AAA 2523 for 25% off anything soft steel or fish lab. And if you're a light line angler, they have the Tatakai floral carbon, which is seems to be very nice. Uh, but so it goes all the way down to six pounds, right? Is this, I think I have four. Yeah, it, it go maybe, down to six, and six is like that might be the lowest. I'm pretty sure it's four for the Tatakai. I think the other one only goes to, to six. But either way, if you're a light line fisherman and you use a floral leader, you can go get like 200 yards. For the same price as like your like what what is typically a leader spool, crazy. All 
all the yards. So you guys go check that out. Use our links below. We really appreciate you. It's a great way to support the show. So you guys are awesome for considering that. Did we uh, mention mule fishing as I'm one get, of our? I'm getting there I because just... the segue will be to John here, right? Oh, so, <laughs> so uh, Watch out, professional. What is this? I, li listen, <laughs> professional. Nobody is throwing those terms around, my friend. Uh, so we had Ethan on last week. We dropped the Bronco Blade, which went down phenomenally well. You guys did amazing you you bought a ton of those things you showed amazing support to ethan uh that sh support comes back to us we look really cool to ethan which is neato gang and then ethan has been fishing with john here before so i mean you guys i want to talk about your connection uh you know what heck it we'll do it right now i'm breaking the show how did you and ethan kind of get together because uh, i mean i was super jealous when i saw he was fishing with you uh out on the moving waters but yeah how did you guys get connected like when when did that start um, ba basically he's like, you got to come up here and fish. I was like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> I mean, that sounds but, about right. <laughs> that was it. Um, he just reached out. He was like, yo, come up here. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've followed him for a while because he does specialize in like ultralight stuff. Nah. And I was like, I didn't really yeah. know a lot of other people that like knew what they're talking about. So it was cool to see him do that. And, uh, I'm sure we probably exchanged messages or something. And then, then he's like, Hey, just, you gotta come up here and fish. And that was like last winter. I planned the trip and I, and I went up there la or um I went up there last summer or this this past summer. Yeah. And um <clears throat> just did some exploring and and we we get along like y'all like cause we'll just catch I mean I'm happy to catch anything. You know, yeah. and I like catching everything too. So we we'll, we we fished one day for, you know, pumpkin seed, then we went for bass, then we went for pike one day, and then we just like went for whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, this is this is this is what I like to do. <laughs> Love it. That's awesome. You got some of our favorite fishies there behind you on the wall too. I love that. That's a great I got a question though. Are you how tall are you? Six four. So what? Bro, what you gotta be on? in the what six plus on? gang. You gotta be in the six <laughs> plus hey, gang. This is a load of crap. Why can't nope. we get a guy who doesn't have a beard who's like five eleven? What? <laughs> what? What do I gotta do? No gremlins allowed. Get no, out. Go, go back in your cage. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we'll get back on the rails here. I love starting the show off with the rail counter already broken anyways. Uh, but yeah, if you guys remember, Bronco Blades are out, Purple Jigs are out. Like, go pick them up while you can, if they're even still available. Use our link below. We really appreciate you for that. Lastly, we got uh, some new Waterland shades coming up soon. So just stay tuned for a video. We'll do a little spring gear video, and we'll drop those in there as well. So let's get into it, shall we? Got anything? else you want to say <laughs> oh potentially potentially there is a uh, custom jig giveaway at the end of the show if you guys know the rules you got a 25 five dollar gift card to monsterbass.com on the line at the end of the show to somebody will randomly win that and if we get over 125 concurrent viewers this is the current level that we got to get to 125 viewers then we're going to give away some custom jigs from Pig Jigs. You guys have seen them on the channel before. Really like these EWG style Ned head with a skirt. We're giving away the truce, it's a wrong. super fancy jig as well, and a spinner bait. Look at that a little bluegill pattern. Pretty rad. And yeah. then the spinner bait, I believe, is like a coleslaw pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Pink slaw. That. <laughs> That's awesome solid. Blades. So I'm, it's got, yeah, two Colorado blades on it uh, and a hat. Bam, with a pig. That is camouflaged like a bass. Yeah. Freaking, freaking rad hat. All right, so that's on the line. We break 125. We'll do that. We might even sweeten the pot. So help us get there. Just make sure everybody who should be here is on here. Invite your friends. Invite your mom. Invite your dad. I don't care. Send them all over. All right, let's get into it. I'm All I'm seeing in the chat is just uh, hashtag short kings. And uh, at least some people got my back. Some bearded, some not bearded. But apparently 511 is short now. It, it, the internet is setting unrealistic standards, and so are light line fishermen. It's not really fair, but here we are. All right, I'm, I'm going to say this real quick because I'm your friend. I don't think short king is a compliment. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm pretty wow. sure. Wow, from the compliment. tall guy, real cool. Anyways, <laughs> there, at least you know what he heard king, and he was like, "Yep, yep." All right. Anyways, oh, let's God. get into the show. <laughs> Q of the D question of the day. So this one's just a fun one. We're just breaking the ice here, so to speak. So what lure, and everyone gets the answer, what lure are you most likely to get impaled by? Why I already know my impaled? answer. It's not even a question. Yeah, it's not even a question. <laughs> if I'm going to get stuck by a lure, it's going to be a uh, like a 100 or a 110 size jerkbait with those really tiny EWG hooks. And it's going to be one of the, the one that has three 
I'm going to catch a bass that's like nine inches long, completely sideways, and he's going to be an absolute lunatic, but not until I'm two centimeters from the half-inch opening where I'm going to try and shove my thumb. That's That's it. That's a good one. I I feel like we've all been there. John, what what would yours be? Uh, I don't... That's a good one. I don't know. I can't think of anything. Um... I, I use so many single hook things, so it's like ah. it's. But I have I have had my hand caught in a someone else's lure, and when I flip a kayak one time, that that's a good <laughs> no. <style. laughs> no. Wait, what was it though? And how did it how did it come out? It, it was um it it wasn't too deep, so I was able to cut the uh, hook off as I was mm. doing a kayak trip. It was like a rebel crawl crankbait, and it was stuck yeah. was stuck in a tree and primo. And caused, and I got my hand stuck in it, and it caused me to flip over. And, uh, no, that's so bad. It was so uncomfortable. <laughs> it, like I never felt it. Like when it was happening, I couldn't figure out why my hand was stuck in the tree. I'm like, I can't yeah. get free. You're getting like drunk downstream. Like, like what? Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> Something is wrong. I'm just like panicking. You know, I don't, I don't know what's happening. What Finally, is... I realized what's going on. But, well, hold on. What? So those rebel cross though, uh, you get a lot of small, small mouth with those. I find yeah. I get a whole bunch yeah, of I little like tiny them. small mussels on those. They're great, but like that's a dangerous predicament to be in. That's like probably third tier right there because you get a lot of smaller, you get a lot of small small mussels, especially in a creek yeah. with that exact lure. So that's the... yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that actually my answer is tiny lures. Any <laughs> tiny treble lure, I don't care where I'm at. And it's usually not with a fish on the other end. It's just grabbing it out of my tackle box or like today I impaled myself. I was getting down a micro lipless. I was on my wall and I go to pick it up and I have this thing. Like I have a premonition in my brain where I'm like, I'm going to grab this bait and I'm going to hook myself. And every time I do, so I grab it, it gets linked to another lure. And as I'm pulling it down, it just goes through my finger as I'm trying to like take it off. I'm like, are you freaking serious? So it's always the Whopper Plopper 60 is like finds a way to go through my finger nine times out of 10. I don't even fish it anymore because I'm like, it's not even worth it because I know I'm going to get stabbed. <laughs> like, I don't even want to use this lure because it's going through my finger and it won't catch any fish. So I just go up to like the 90 plus. I'm like, you know what? Fishing big ploppers only. i would never impaled myself, knock on wood, with a swim bait. Like, I just haven't done it. The big baits, I feel safe around. The jerk baits even, I haven't. But the little tiny baits, man, they just find their way through your flesh. So, man, I, lo- I love ultralight, but gosh dang. <laughs> Every time. Backup, backup answer's got to be Red Eye Shad because they have those giant, like, size four. I think they are two, like, uh, hooks that are, like, upsized. Yeah. And whenever you catch, like, a medium sized fish, like, I just feel like that's just an issue waiting to happen. And do so, you ever do you ever use pliers? No. Nah. It's like you, you know you're those. gonna get stabbed. No. And yeah. you just like you're like, no, I'm using my hand. <laughs> just <laughs> like an idiot. That's what it is. I'm not why would I use pliers? What okay. why would I use uh this amazing utility tool? Like <laughs> let me no. have like three pairs with me too. Yeah. All right. Throw let's get away. into the show me. Let's start talking. Let's start talking. I'm gonna say crick, but creek fishing. Um I'm so I wanna crick. start we started we have a nice little pattern going where we start mm-hmm. with like rods reel gear that kind of thing and then we kind of get into like some of the more of the how to so Mm -hmm. in i want to start first off you're you're mostly doing a lot of kayak fishing are you exclusively kayak or do you do some like uh wet weighting as well um in the winter time i kayak so but i love wet weighting like that's probably my favorite and like a lot of my videos like everybody i've been kayaking a ton so much everybody's like you probably should change your name to Kayak fishing adventures. I'm like, yeah, but kayaking you can get to so many places where it's fun, especially in the winter time. Right. Um, all, all these streams around here, you can't really catch much out of them in the in the winter. So, um, but I I just got some like little um, hippie waders, like little slip-ons. But I I'll, I'll go starting in March, just walking in through the water, waist deep, and get to wherever I want to get to. But uh, that's yeah, I, I I would rather do that. I like being there with it. In there in it. Ten out of ten. Totally agree. Hard agree. Yeah. Absolutely. Like if I that, had to pick one place, it'd be the river. And if I could only fish one way, it, if you could always do it, it, that's how I would do it. Now, now, question on that when you're waiting, right? Because we always get this. We we wait we wait we we we, 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 we wet <laughs> wait a lot. That's like hard to say. <laughs> but we'll, we'll throw on Crocs and just like go tromping down the the creek, if you will. 
And uh, every time we get comments from people further down south, and they're like, are you crazy? Like, what are you, what are you doing? So I want to know, like, in your region, you go wading in the Tennessee. river. Is there anything that you're, like, concerned about? Tennessee River, Tennessee Creek. Am, uh, I, getting, like, am I getting my toes bit off? Is, am, I, am I in danger? Like, are you ever worried? Uh, I, I don't wear, I mean, I, I used to wear just tennis shoes all the time. Um, no. Nope. I finally got some like decent wading shoes, drain pretty fast. But if I I wouldn't go rocks or anything, cause just cause how sharp the rocks are, um, there's a lot of there's uh, we got yeah. different creeks. We got some creeks that are pebbles. We got some that are muddy, sandy, and then we got a lot that are just like boulders where every step's like you're sliding up and down on another yeah. rock, and it's those are the that's a recipe for disaster in a crock. You're just yeah. asking for a broken lower extremity. Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not worried about people. I, I get. Hey, watch out for snakes. Watch out for this. I'm like, I right. don't care. I'm just. Yeah, the people. And, and then there's people that are like, they won't even wait. They're like, why aren't you wearing waders? I'm like, I don't want to wear waders. I don't care if the water's 50 degrees. I'll, I'd, I'd rather do this. Like, yeah. just let me let me do what I want to do. Yeah, I get a lot of that, but because uh, a lot of people just don't know, just aren't aren't. They did it when they was a kid and they forgot about it and they they've never they haven't been they ain't touched the water in 50 years. They sit in their boat or. Or on yeah. the bank, and stuff you like actually that. can go, go in the water all by yourself with your skin. You <laughs> can just believe get it or not, it won't <laughs> just erode your flesh. It's crazy, yeah. it's the craziest thing. But yeah, like pe people, especially if they're further down south, even further than you, even they're always like, you know, watch out for snapping turtles, especially. Do we got gators? Do we got snakes? We get the water moccasins a lot more. We get snakes, we don't get like water moccasins really it was just it's your run-of-the-mill snakes that i would encounter most of the time it's not that they're not there it's just that they're not there in the numbers that i'm concerned about but like i'll go down to my local lake and see them swimming around on the on the shoreline i'm like i'm not even in the water and this thing's coming up on me so but snapping turtles sure those are everywhere we just i guess we just don't think about them when they're in the water do we do you I, ever can i don't know anybody that's ever been bit by a snapping turtle so that's how i base everything off of i know i got a friend that's bit by a cotton mouth uh, oh man he was weed eating we have those oh, around gotcha. here yeah and i've seen a, i've seen one rattlesnake but we have those around too right like most time i'm just like eh. I, like how many times are what's the odds i mean it could happen yeah but what like what are the odds you yeah, got better have... odds of dying by a vending machine falling on you right like <laughs> the, worst, the worst the <laughs> worst this is, I think the only time you really got to worry about that is if you're in a super rocky area where there's like a rock break and then the sun's been baking it and you yep. you okay. surprise one. That's where that's really probably and maybe the occasional tree branch, but that's got to be like less than a million to one to hit right. the sunbathing snake in a tree that you get in. Like that's got to be a billion to one. The rocks. Yeah, that'll happen. That happens in Canada all the time. We just don't have that snake where in my spot. Right. So but like that's really the only time and. If you know that, I think you should be careful. But otherwise, they don't want to be anywhere near you. They don't. They can hear the vibration of you. They can feel you coming from they're so out. far away. They peace that out, they, they're like, see you, nerd. I'm out. They don't want anything to do with you. Yeah. It's pretty low. I don't worry about but, that. I, you know, I get People get mad at me because I'll get leeches all the time. That's probably the one thing that people say. get super mad about. Yeah. I don't even... I just wipe them off, and I'll just bleed for a little while. I don't even bother. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Um, I stopped running Crocs when I had a piece of shale break off in my heel and like, we weren't even really like fishing. So I was like, that was so horrible. Bad. That was one of the, I woke up at like 3am this having already gone to the hospital. I go back. I could barely think I drive myself to the hospital. Ladies digging around in my heel. I about passed out. Uh, and I was ready to quit. So yeah, I stopped doing that. I have waiting shoes now. Quit. Life? Solid purchase. We're going to talk about the waiting shoes later. <laughs> So if you're, when you're All in right. your kayak, when you're in your kayak, how many rods are you carrying? And what do you typically bring with you? Okay. Well, for me, this is uh, it depends on what am I doing that I got, I got skinny, skinny creeks. I got rivers. I got big rivers. I got lakes. medium. You're not in like something like the Mississippi, but right, you're not in like, like river. but you're not in, okay. but you're not in like a six foot wide tailwater. You're in like yeah. a. You got a the meat a medium size. You might see some smallmouth. You might see some like really angry bluegill, and maybe everything between. All right. Um, if I'm doing something and I and I'm bass fishing, most of the time I'm either bass fishing or pan fishing. Whenever I go down these streams, because whenever I get to go down these rivers, it's like I really want to take advantage of that and like target those bigger fish. 
So I got a river close to me that's full of uh, the Alabama spots. It's my favorite place to go. There's no smallmouth in it because it's the way it's set up. It's the only river in Tennessee that's not connected to the Tennessee River. What? So, um, it's and it's it's crystal clear. It's awesome. And um, I caught a five I caught a five pound five ounce spotted bass Oof. out of it in the river. Ah! That thing was that was fun. That, that's oh insane. God. So so usually so if I'm targeting like bass stuff, so I'm taking a um. Usually, uh, my first rod is going to be a medium, 6'9", medium, extra fast, is what I like to use. And um, 2,500 size reel, 10-pound braid, 10-pound leader line. And that's the one I'm usually using the most. And I finesse fish with it. I can do everything with it. That's my weighting. That's like my rod I use mo more than anything for bass fishing. But I'll usually have a Yumdinger. If I either have Yumdinger on it or a Helgramite. It's Wait, what Helgramite? Uh, Nico you know. Huggermites. Nico, baby. That's awesome. What color? Is it mud bug? That's the new big ones right here. Yeah. Oh, we saw it, yeah. I got, what color uh, is your go-to? Because you got that clear water. So what are you, are you going mud something bug. bright? Yeah. I knew it. So I said. You saw his post like three days ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, you posted it on Instagram like three days ago. You're like, oh, I figured it oh. out. Well, you I you detected you. Now I'm going to look. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, go on, man. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I like the, the dark color, the dark colored ones, definitely. But for the yum dinger, I'll throw, this is my favorite, it's, uh, orange, it's bubblegum yellow swirl. And that's what I caught the five pound um, spot on. Nice. It's a, yeah, I don't know. So I'll throw that. I'll go back and forth. Depends on what's going on, like in how I'm oh, fishing. There it is. The river. So a medium rod, obviously. And that's my, I'll, and I'll fish current finesse like fishing more than i will like power fish it because i'm looking for those holes and i know how to like work the lure through the through the areas where it could be power fish or whatever um a spinner bait other one i'm gonna have with me um what are you running the spinner bait on is it that's not are you running that on the extra fast i, I can because i have some like that spinner bait you showed some of those like that are you know low drag i'll i, I will if i need to but like I barely, I, I barely use casting stuff, and I've only just started using them like a year ago, like for real. So, I will take a casting rod, a medium heavy. Uh, I'll also throw. I got a six six medium heavy spinning rod. I love it because it's very versatile, and I'll throw spinner baits on it, and I've caught all kinds of fish on it. That's why I was so asking, and that's just a fast though, right? Um, I think it's just a fast, yeah. The that's like the only thing that I find I can get away with a spinner bait. That's like three eighths or a quarter. Like mm. anything else I find is like, it's so awkward. And I either have too much backbone where I don't know what the crap is going on with it. And I'm working it too fast or it's so soft that it's like, I feel like I'm just like, I'm getting like an aftershock. Like after I, after I cast something like that, I find it ribby. Like the, that's like literally the only one that I've put a spinner made on, on a spinning setup. Is that I don't have, the, I don't have that one dialed in for like lake fishing yet because I I switched over to a casting rod, and I first started using. I was I was getting hits and jerking it out of their mouth because I had it, it was too <laughs> stiff. Yeah, because I was used to my spinning setup. So I'm like, I don't even know. So I'm still working on that. But for if I if it's something I know I need want to have, I'll just I'll take that medium. And I usually use this one. It's like six six, but you can use a seven foot. And like the same reel, twenty five hundred. I got a couple of the uh, Shimano Nasis or whatever, and I got a Shimano Miraville. You know, they do they they hold up fine. Yeah. And then, um, like that's the two most of the time. Most of the time, that's all I need. But I'll I'll bring one more and either a medium light, um, with a little bit smaller lure, or just an extra thing, Rods. like for a one eighth and below or something like that. Or what's that cut off for that's you? That's way too heavy. <laughs> no, um, now say I, I'm like like say a crappie lure, like one sixteenth ounce okay, um, okay, crappie lure, or a little bitty. Maybe I'll just have a little swim bait on there, a little three inch yeah. swim bait, but. Well, that's I'll why I was two, that's two why mediums, I was curious. But... That's what I was curious about because we end up with a lot of choked spots in most of our rivers. Like almost all the river that you see in Michigan is gonna have cover on it. Like yep. down timber, oh, yeah. ha hangover. Yeah, yeah. There's it's whenever you see an open spot, you're like, wait, is this, wait. So am so I, where am I okay? Where did you and Ethan fish? Like what river? Uh, Don't tell anybody spots. The yeah, Grand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty big river. I think it's the, is it called? The, I think it's the Grand River. Yeah, it's yeah, the called. longest river in the state. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, you you won't believe it. Like, we'll go fish the Grand, right? Me saying this right now is going to make people mad. But then, like, if there's a picture with a bridge behind you, people are like, I, I know where that bridge is. Like, you're giving away my spot. I'm like, bro, there's, like, a bridge every half mile on the Grand. Like, it's all over. What? <laughs> so, yeah. Dude, but the So the Grand is a great example because there are parts of the Grand where it's super wide. It gets, like, huge, especially if the water's high or if we're, we've got flooding, especially in the spring, something like that. But then there's also the same river you get two inches deep and like choked it to all hell. Like, and it can be an absolute nightmare. Case in point, uh, Ethan and I, you probably, we didn't fish the same spot. I guarantee it. But like we went uh, and actually Paul was there too, right? This was, I fished with Ethan maybe <laughs> on a lake a different time. Like Anyways. That. So yeah, last time Paul, Ethan and I went out on the Grand, we hit a spot and yeah, I got too choked out. So, I mean, we're about to ask you about your kayak, which is why I'm segueing here, but we took our Hobies which is a terrible idea. And uh, this part, no, it was bad. You you remember how bad this it, was, it Paul? Turned, Did you forget? It, it turned out not great, but I still don't think it's a horrible idea. Okay. Well, anyways, <laughs> we couldn't get through, so I don't know what you think <laughs> good or bad here. Anyways, we yeah. had to get out and walk our kayaks. That's yeah. what I define as bad. But... In like 50 degree water, but yeah. It's b- <laughs> anyway, yeah, it wasn't good. How, yeah, exactly. <laughs> My point. Anyways, so yeah, we take our pedal kayaks. We're not doing so well. He's obviously in his old town. He flips up the drive. He paddles ahead. He 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 just he literally just there, typed right? in a workout of a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, it was it was the workout for sure because it was running pretty hard and he had to paddle his way up. We had to walk it, so I guess I don't know. We didn't deal with that as much. The skinny skinny pedal not so fun in that kind of river setting. Anyways, on that note, what kind of yak you running? Oh, uh, I, I, when I went to, when I went up there fishing, either I had the same, I have the same, uh, kayak, the old town PDL 120. Yeah. So I got old, old town sent me that one. And, but bef- the first kayak I have was this cheap kayak that I hated. And I got that big one and I've taken that old town and done a bunch, a bunch of rivers. I've put it in a lot of tough places. But I just, a t- couple months ago, I just got the, um, the new Crescent Sholey. And yeah. man, this is, this is this is that that was made for me. That's like that's my kind of kayak. It's it's awesome. I've already gotten it into places where I'm like I would have never got any other kayak in here. Yeah. It um I I took the um I've taken the old town a lot of rivers, a lot of places and getting into the Sholey and then realizing how much easier it is to maneuver, especially like say you're going down current and stuff. It is so it's 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 I can't even exaggerate like how much different it is. Cause it's it's so much different. Like you wouldn't even. I'm not. I never even thought to think that much. Oh, so. it's it's really funny you say that. So Drew Gregory, who's kind of the well, not kind of the spokesperson for Crescent, and really has helped design the show. He's the guy. Yeah, 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 he. You know, and he's a very prolific tournament fish kayak tournament fisherman. Anyways, um, so he uh he just posted. He was on another co- another podcast, and he just posted this morning. He was like. People don't talk enough about whole design or think about it when yeah. they're purchasing a boat. And I chatted them for what it's worth, which is nothing. But my immediate thought was like, dude, no, everyone assumes that if you spend a thousand dollars, you're getting a kayak that's going to work in the situation that you want. And no one thinks about, they think about the drive dropping down and that's about it. And I'm like, the, no one's like, Hey, what is that draft? And you're like, well, the Sholey drafts about an inch and a half. The old town drafts about eight inches, right? With the pedal, with the drive up. <laughs> and then the Hobie Crazy. drafts six or eight inches, which is low, but you still got your uh, your rudder and you still have the drive down. So even with those up, you're still at like four times the draft of, yeah. of the Sholey. The Sholey also has that huge front end. There's like a bulbous front end in the, like right at the front of it. But that's what's keeping you nice and high when you're going through those rapids and you don't even... You don't do anything. You're just like, hey, look, I made it. And someone else with like one of those knife edge double hull, they're gonna, they're, they're literally floating on top, and you could turn sideways at any moment because that's just not designed for that. And it's such a big, it's such a big difference if you're, if you're in a place like you are, uh, and you're living on the river. It's just a huge difference. I've already gotten so much confidence. Like, I used to be <laughs> nervous, like going down, like it say, you know how to go down, like say the water's four inches deep, but it's like a thirty yard span. You're right. Those bigger kayaks, you could get tumbling. You hit one rock and you're turned sideways. Now, you're if it's shallow, close. you can step yeah. out a lot of times, but you just it could be a, a, a bigger drop off. But with that, surely 
it's gonna stay straight and i've tumble and it bounces it just keeps on going straight through it's insane i'm, I'm just like oh man i'm just like so relaxed i'm like wow everybody behind I'm, you i'm always is just so like... worried about those well so there's a video of uh who's the guy who designed the apex i forget the paddle guy the jackson right eric jackson the guy Yep. Uh, designed that um, that all carbon fiber, you know, monster of a kayak. Fourteen thousand um, dollar kayak. Well, they yeah, they went to fish this like huge waterfall area with these big mm-hmm. pools, but you had to go down rapids to get to it. And uh, I, I don't even remember the other guy's name. The Six Sense fisherman who was uh you know he's been running that old town with the motor. Uh, he was behind him. The dude in the apex literally did do, he did nothing. Granted, he's a professional paddler, but he's in a boat designed for this, and he basically yeah. did this all the way through these rapids. That dude in the old in a in a in a thirteen and a half foot old town was doing three sixties, dumped like three different times, barely freaking made it out with his life. Yeah. And it was just and it's not a dig on the old town. If you take a paddle kayak like that and you get on open water, you got to do a lot more work because you're not drafting. You you yeah. want some draft yeah. and you want to get two holes in there. It's just a different boat. So when you're in the creek though, yeah, no draft, nice big front end, uh really, you know, obviously lightweight is is helping you out a ton. Uh, and then tracking in the current is huge because that's another thing people are like, they just yeah. assume a kayak's going to track. No one thinks about, well, if you get in a, a Pelican, right, for $350, $500 or whatever, the, the tracking on each paddle is not even going to be the same galaxy as like a pedal kayak. Pedal kayak pretty much tracks perfectly all day, every day, no matter where you are. Sometimes the track's too good, like in the river. <laughs> and, you know, and it's it's a problem for you. So it's really interesting how like people just don't ask that question like, well, how does it track? What's it designed for? Is it designed to be right. in like turbulent water, shallow water? Is it designed to be in an open lake, big water, or like the ocean? Right? There's a there's a totally different, and you well, already that's, kind of express the difference, right? That that's where kayaks are going. I feel because now, I mean, a bunch of brands just dropped, including the Sholey, the river kayaks. Right? There, we I used love to have the specialization of it. I, I love right. It. Yeah, so like the uh, the OG to us was a Predator MX, right? The MX I love that boat so much. was was perfect for the river. It was wider, uh, the beam was wider than most other kayaks at the time. So it was re- really well balanced, and it was eleven seven, eleven six, right? Uh, it was eleven. Like it was eleven six, yeah. But it also was a little bit, uh, a little uh, thicker than the standard boat. So even though you got the dual hull, uh, they were tighter in the middle, but the boat was a little wider. So it was almost like yeah. an ice skate in that in the river. It was it was crazy. So it was built for that type of water. The Sholey's built for that type of water, right? Bonafide's got one that just dropped. What is the RS one seventeen or whatever? RVR one RVR, thank you. One seventeen yeah, yeah. River, get it? Oh, cool. All right. So <laughs> man, they're so clever with their with their acronyms. Uh, but, so we got the River one seventeen or whatever. So I mean all these these brands are doing it. That's really cool. So um yeah, interesting. And then you think about you know, the different types of rivers you brought up at the beginning. We're like, hey, what are you throwing in your kayak? Well, where am I going, right? Like the Hobie, anytime there's big water, love it. Anytime there's a wide river, absolutely love it. If it's going to be deeper than a foot, pretty stoked for that because I can use my pedal drive. <laughs> and when you can use that pedal drive, it's amazing. Like, because now I have full control. However, I'd be very interested just to go down a river in a paddle kayak made for the river and just kind of compare, right? Maybe I can't do a full 360 spin. I don't have my pedal drive, but if it controls well enough, you know, and then I'm I'm lighter, it's easier to get to the water. I can drop in at spots. I would never take the Hobie because I can tell you, man, we carried the Hobie through the woods because I dropped it in oh, yeah. where, you, where you shouldn't drop it That's in. And right. then I, I broke it uh, and luckily it didn't tumble, but I like, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Like the dam was running too too hard for me at the time. So I like spun into the trees. We had to drag it up through the woods, drop it back down in a safer spot. It was horrible. So yeah, I can imagine. Lighter yak could be a lot more fun. Should we talk yeah. about uh go ahead? Well, I'll, I'll mention one more thing about the uh, the kayak just just to yeah. sell people because I, I have the old town and it's a it's not as big as the Hobie, but it's still big. Right. You, I could you if you're in a kayak and get a big one and then get a river kayak if you want to do skinny stuff, but like a like a small river kayak, not not a big one. But like the old the um the Sholey, I first get it, when you first like just paddle it with one paddle, you move. It's it's amazing. You're not like yeah. ramping up. <laughs> you it just moves. You can turn yeah. around in the current, sit right on the current. It just sits there on it. It just it just takes that current. I can go Man. upstream with ease. No, um, no draft, that's a my dude. That's like you don't even think about. Yeah, no draft, you're, you're, my dude. I'm telling you, don't yeah. get swept away like like all the other ones. It, 
you just don't get swept away. Like like an old town try turning around, you're like already hundred yards downstream. You're toast. <laughs> same same with the Hobie, man. Like because we'll if we have to skinny paddle, the current cannot be above a certain speed because <laughs> then we can't go up. Right when you're skinny paddling, you're like doing those half half steps. It just doesn't work because we have the fin drive you have the prop drive so it's a little bit different but yeah i mean it's there it's a no-brainer and for paul and i we haven't even talked about this on the channel yet but paul did a video kind of setting up his uh his kayak for spring i'm gonna do some more content on mine uh but then we were talking and we were like man kind of you know i love my hobie it's great because it's like a cadillac right it's pretty solid to have but it's also a friggin' boat like a cadillac is so i kind of want like streamlined yaks so we're definitely considering flipping to a river kayak and maybe even just maybe swapping out the hobie it's oh ice skating oh do we lose jeff oh i thought it was me all right well i'm gonna transition <laughs> us because i we are actually looking about switching boats so actually the crescent was the boat that i was actually looking at i'm a huge fan of the way that boat is designed and i love i love the way everything's like built in molded in and i and i love like the idea of the strap in the front i love the minimalist piece of like the way the seat is designed with the the, the two uh aluminum it's just it was perfect for how i like to fish i know jeff is really interested in the bonafide that that rvr um, i really so want to try that one out too so bad man they 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 both are like on opposite sides of the spectrum and that's just how jeff and i are jeff would always almost go for like yeah. the more high-end pre-designed like finished product i want something that's a little more raw but like designed purposefully simplistic like we're that's just yeah. that's who we are and, and that those are the ones we landed on have you have you so even in, even in this river comparison i got to try out uh, a buddy of mine works at a shop and we, he brought the jackson kusa x which is the other Yes, a river kayak that's yep. out. Yep. So I was like, I was, I was really excited just to try it out because I want to sure. know everything that's involved in creek and river stuff. I like, I want to know everything that has to do with it. Yeah. So I, I talked to some Jackson guys and they were like, oh, we, we'll get you one. And never happened. So I don't know. <laughs> so I was like, hey, it would have been nice. I loved it. Yeah. But um, but even so, take that Jackson Cusa X and the Sholey, and that's the two that we we took down a skinny river. They are totally different. They're so different. Just those yeah. two river kayaks. Like yeah. even in river kayaks, they are way different. They're twenty pounds apart. One's twenty pounds more than the other. Like, but if you want to stand and fish, the the Kusa X, it's so much easier to stand in. Sure. Surely, I'm not probably gonna stand and fish. Mm -hmm. I got my size. Um, and and that's everything. Also, everything's compared off like how what what size you are and everything. But but I but I love the Surely because it's I wanted it because it's lighter. I wanted that seventy seven pound so much at 20 pounds in a boat once you get the stuff in it is massive so i have a i have a 50 pound what's well, 48 pound uh sit inside it's an old town as well um the vapor 10 yeah and i yeah. i love that kayak it's great i'm actually selling it because i'm going to get into the sit on top but <clears throat> the problem to your point is like like the that boat compared to my other boat i'm so far on the opposite side of the spectrum that like i could pick up completely loaded down with like all the stuff camera gear camera arm as much gear as i could shove into that 55 pound boat and i could still pick it up from the side and just walk it to wherever i need to go i don't bring wheels or anything i have to have wheels on my hobie there's no question about it no option for it i couldn't without ruining it i couldn't get it to where i need to get it otherwise and it's it's it is unbelievable. Like that Jackson, I'll tell you right now. I personally, just having looked at it, I probably would never pick the Jackson over the Sholey. Just the way it's designed, I probably never would. And I, that's just my. I mean, that's just me. Yeah. Um, it looks like a nice boat, but I kind of have a predilection. Like ever since like the Gen Two and Gen Three of those Jacksons came out, I just noticed that a lot of stuff that was molded in is not molded in. I noticed that the hatches are not as heavy duty as they used to be. And maybe that was to cut weight, and there's probably a purpose behind it. I know Eric Jackson; he's just like an unbelievable kayak designer, and he is—he's a river man. There's no doubt about it. But as an angler, I'm probably—I would go with the Sholey all day, every day. Simple. It's a two to four rod max setup, and and it's just—it's built for the river. That's what it's going to do, yeah. and I wouldn't take it anywhere else. Uh, it's um, that, I, I just love the diversity of them. I like how they're making making different ones, and and there's every every one's for somebody different, like. You know, this is built for somebody. This is built for somebody. You know, yes. so I, I like how, I like the options, and I like how these 
companies are finally making stuff and i'm like what are they what's the next thing they're gonna make like, what, <laughs> uh, get out there and start getting somebody else to make something else we got to get you on an inflatable i feel like you would really enjoy that i haven't tried that yeah i've never I, that was the first jackson i've ever been on so there's a lot of kayaks i've never i haven't used because i haven't been kayaking long yeah but that is i love talking about kayaks and because i like people ask you like we were talking about and you can't when everybody's like what kayak should i get i'm like i hate that question that's the worst because it's like it's impossible it needs to be you... like a it'd be cool to have somebody just does a like a, a live stream every at once a week and just you people just call in and say what kayak do i want and you just like <laughs> run down all the things all right you how know... tall are you how much do you weigh what are you going to use it for what are you planning to do how long are you going to fish you know well, because it's a personality thing too. Because, like, again, the difference between that the the bona fide that RVR and the Crescent that Sholey, the price tag identical, hundred dollar difference, virtually a wash. It's like a five percent difference, maybe less, right? Uh, from a design and feature standpoint, they have a lot of similar features: length, width, draft, a lot of that stuff. The RVR is designed for more larger rivers, uh, sl- like you know, bigger current, that type of thing. The yeah. Sholey's designed for trim water creek fishing it'll do great in big water and it does awesome in rapids but like those are totally different boats to your point like yeah. they're not designed to be the same boat the rvr is going to have a bunch of features like a tray underneath the seat and like sort of like more well-defined techie type stuff the Sholey is like yeah you can add stuff if you want but this thing's built to be on its own it's minimalist and you throw yeah. your crap in there and you leave and there's not much to it it's just that yeah, it again, like Jeff and I, we went immediately. I knew exactly which one he was going to pick when we we did a an episode like, "Hey, we were going to get a river kayak. Which one would we get?" I knew what he was going to pick before we started. Yeah, and I knew it wasn't going to be the Sholey. So it's not a dig. It's just like to your point, it it's all about how you fish, where you fish, certainly your your body type, it, it, the car you're driving, man. Like you're not gonna go buy a Hobie if you're driving like a Ford Fiesta. You're just not gonna do it. Like, I mean, and so it's like there's so many to your point. There's so many different factors, and it's it is really cool because someone will get on the show and be like, "What kind of kayak should I get?" And you have to ask them like, "What's your budget? Is that the top of your budget?" Yeah. And like you have to go through the whole thing, or else you're gonna be like, "Get a an old town, probably." Yeah. <laughs> like, I, hey, I get old town. It'll work. <laughs> it well, it'll it'll work great. It'll last forever. You sell it for more money than you bought it for. I, I don't know. Like. Yeah. That's, but yeah, it's, it's almost impossible. It really is. All right. So normally we get to the middle of the show and we do have a fun one and I want to hit that one real quick. But before we do that, we talked about your bass setups. What setups would you bring with you in the river if you were looking for like panfish? Yeah. So, um, I, me and Ethan always argue or not argue. We go back and forth. He loves the ultralight. I love light, light action. Oh, my, like right the setup right now i got i have a bunch of different ones but i, I will grab it and if that's just like i'm gonna go multi-species fishing six six light action tfo rod the trout panfish rod got a shimano is it um Sen- the name was sensor oh no, no wait is that a how is that an expensive one i think no i think that's an ultralight actually oh since oh okay now it's the sahara or something like that it's like 89 dollars yeah. Um. And I got four pound mono on it. And, mono. Yeah. And it'll. That is super surprising to me. I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't know. When, if I'm ultra efficient, I just like mono because. I don't know. It's very forgiving. You just it, it's cheap. Do whatever. If I break off or cut off, it's tough. It holds up. You know. It does. Um. It floats though, so I'm a little surprised because you get that buoyancy, and all of a sudden, like if you're getting a you're getting some currents, like you're you got to do a little more fighting when you're going that light. Yeah, I guess I never thought about it like that. But um, most of the time, you're doing it. You're, it, you're getting it done. I'm not. This, there's yeah. no wrong answer. <laughs> and most of the, most of the time like that, it's I'm not fishing in as much current. Um, it's usually you're fishing those calmer pockets or sure areas where little fish, they don't like they'll hammer sometimes. But a lot of times, if you're throwing a little, like I love a little Bobby Garland, and if it's if it's just a lure, I just want to go catch whatever. Like I'll just throw a little Bobby Garland on a one thirty seconds ounce or one sixteenth ounce, um, little jig head, and fish, panfish and stuff. Especially they look at lures. Sometimes they hammer, but a lot of times they 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 look at it for a minute to eat it. So in in current, it's like you won't get as many unless you're using like a treble lure or a little rooster tail or something. But yeah, I mean that 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 rod that six six, perfect size, and so, and I like I do like some smaller. Um, I'm having one made. At a shop in town, a six three light action. Oh, um, I just wanted to get one custom made. I like that six three size, and really nobody makes that size. 
talked to a couple people about it. It's like, well, nobody. nobody buys it. I'm like, well, I'd buy it. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just like it. So why do you like the six three more than the six six or the six? Which is what you can find on the shelf. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Maybe because I'm like being different. You just like it. But I feel like, like I don't know. Why do people buy a seven foot one rather than a seven foot? Like I do. I have a set the yeah. my medium light, which I'm like obsessed with. Seven one, never seven four, never seven foot, and I would never go six six. Yeah, I don't know. I'm an insane person. I agree. I'm totally. I'm Sometimes in your it camp. Just, it just fits you. It's like it just feels right. It, yeah. If I got right a seven it. foot, I'd be like, something's not right. <laughs> I would know. Like, <laughs> I don't. I I have a few seven foot in my spinnings, but for most of my bat, I have like five that are like six nine or six ten. Because I love that size for waiting. It's just oh, 100%. It just, it's just the right. I used to I use like six this. six, and that was a little bit too short. Now it's like okay. I'm a Michigan. We don't have big, as big a fish as you, so I can get away with six six. I like the six, or I like the six foot. I, I'm a six foot fan. I use a five five for my ultralight. We're actually gonna we're working on designing a, an ultralight rod right now with Monster Bass, and it's going to be a six footer. Um, nice. I'm really excited about it. It's 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 on the line though, because you get into these situations a lot of times where we fish in these when you're wet waiting, where I may not be able to cast that. Or not well, because I'm going to be doing this. I'm like, mm -hmm. literally, there's nothing left. By the time I'm in behind, behind this tree, around this bend, standing on this rock, doing this thing, like, that's what I got. So that six foot's like, anything longer than that, I feel hampered at mm -hmm. times in the river. So I like the six foot. But I like the length, because when I take the ultralight out, I like to only have one ultralight. Because then I just, I don't have to worry yeah. about it. I just have the rod. So I'll, I'll find myself on St. Clair. I'll have either six or four pound uh, braid on a four pound uh usually four pound or or six pound uh leader and when you catch a five pound smallmouth on that rod yeah i'll take the extra six inches every single time <laughs> all day every day twice on sunday like i'll take the extra six inches um so it's i think that six foot's like it's perfect for the open water which is great and where i like it but it's also great for the river but i the five five if i could have two i'd have five five in the in the river for the ultralight but i would almost always go seven one for the medium light and i love the medium light i'm like you where i used to use a medium all the time and then i went to a i went to the seven one extra fast medium light it throw like the one eighth is at like the top end of what it'll throw okay. but i put on like the tiniest 1000 size reel and i feel like i can cast like a trillion miles but i also have like really good accuracy and but the even with the seven one i feel like i just have just the right balance of pot like fish fighting power and sensitivity I have so much confidence. It's like my favorite thing to fish. I could, if I only had one rod, that that might be it. Do you do you use that in your kayak and fish out of your kayak all the time? Okay. And actually, it's unfortunate they make a shorter butt version of it. But I have like the regular. But I it's it's a, it's a thirteen fishing. Uh, okay. The Omen Black. I yeah. I thought about like getting a nicer one or whatever, and I was like, why? I like this rod so much. Like thirteen fishing, I have a lot of respect for. Because they do something that, like, the only other people who do it is, like, TFO, where they make, like, every single size and, like, action and combination of things, like, that you can find. Like, if you can dream it, they have it. A lot of other companies be like, well, no, I'm not going to do a 7-1 extra fast medium light. That's stupid. I have a 7-foot. Why would I have? They have 7-foot, yeah. 7-1, 7-4. So, like, they, got, they have everything, right? I love that about them. I just think that's so cool. I, I would like to try that. Because that, that's the thing. I used to like a medium light. I like the I like the lighter, and but I I didn't really realize that they made a medium. I, I didn't realize they made an extra fast in rods till like two years ago, and yeah. then once I learned that, I'm like that kind of re makes me rethink what I other rods. Is it like I, the extra fast? I love that, and especially current. If you're fishing in current, 100%. it's amazing how much more since like you get that hook set like so much quicker. I agree. And, um, I lost especially so many fish. Because using the wrong stuff. And I didn't realize that it took years to learn that. Same here. Biggest mistake I made when I started was not asking somebody who knew like what I should get. Because I ended up with like medium, moderate action when I really wanted medium, heaven fast. I went with yeah. eight foot rod when I should have had a seven foot rod. Like, and then I was like going salmon fishing and I would have like a medium, you know, like six, eight. And you're like, what are you doing here, man? You're just so much harder than it needs to be. And like, I did that for years. I just would get like the, I'd be like, this one looks cool. And I'm like, does it have a trigger? Nope. Okay. It's the one I want. Like, I, don't, I didn't know. I had no idea. It took me a long time before I like 
even understood. And then it took years after that before I really had an understanding of like, no, I like, I prefer this or I need this type of rod for this situation, et cetera, et cetera. It took me a long, that was, we talked about that last week. I was like, that's the biggest mistake that I made was just not relying on someone else to make that decision for me when I first started fishing or even just like asking somebody who knew. What, what did you, do you, do you ever fish out of a boat or? No, just I, well, I had a tin boat for, I don't know, year, year and a half, like a season and a half. I hate it. That's what pushed me actually into kayak fishing. Cause I lived in an apartment I had this tin boat. It was always broken. 50s Johnson motor. You know, just, it was fine. And look, but I was always working on it. I was had to like, we lived in like a not so great area. So I had to like take everything out of the boat every time I went fishing. I'm like, dude, I just, I'd have like this like, like angsty excitement that was like being quelled because I was like having to drag this like 75 pound motor, put it on, grab the 50 pound battery, put it on, grab all my fish stuff, yeah. put it on, grab the loot. And it was like, it was killing me because I just want to go fish. And then I sold that and bought my first kayak and it, that changed everything. And that's how I ended up being a kayak fisherman. Cause it was like, I lived in an apartment. I could stash it and lock it up behind my place, drag it around, put it in the truck, go. Yeah. It makes everything. That's, I, that's a, the, probably the biggest thing when people are like, why don't you get a boat? You know, they always hear that conversation. Like, the, the simplicity of kayak so it's just it's so nice it's just so fun it's just like ah all i gotta do but whenever i like what drives me crazy is now there's a lot of kayakers and they're starting to get river and creek guys that talk it's like whenever i would go like look for what rod and reel or what lure it was always from a bass boat perspective and you can listen to some of that but you can't that is not the same as river or creek fishing it, it, so it's true. not the same so like it, when you're when you're dialing it down, like yeah, you can take some of their advice and some of this stuff, but then that's another, that's one of the big reasons I started my channel just because I was just trying to find all that information out. And uh, it is funny when you hear someone talk about like the, I think spring is like the be- one of the best examples. Uh, you'll hear like best springtime lures, the selection for like early spring on a lake versus a river. You won't even have the same box. You're not going to grab a lipless, my guy. Like it's not gonna, You're not going to grab a jerk bait. You're just not going to do it. Like there's a hundred other things I would grab before I grab those two things. Now, th- those are great examples. And when I make my video right in a week, it'll yeah. have those in there. But if I was doing it from the perspective of someone who's like a river fisherman, I'd have an ultralight jig box. I'd have hair jigs. I'd have like little baby craws, uh, maybe upsized. I'd have big butt square bill. Like it'd be a totally, you know, a really different deal. Uh, and you'd be like, the water's going to be nasty. It's going to be high and nasty. So like, it's just a totally different perspective. I totally agree with you. I, I made this little like short, like uh short video or whatever, yeah. <laughs> just kind of mess just mess around. And it was my, my top two lures for each season. And I went like winter, you know, spring, summer, and it was yeah. the same two lures <laughs> every time. <laughs> like for river fishing, especially like you, it's like. You really don't have to have that many. That's what I like. I, that's the simplicity I like about, you know, current like or like smaller rivers and creeks. You don't have to have a lot of stuff. The the same finesse lure is the is no matter what brand or style, it's the same thing. It does yeah. this. This crawl is not going to get bit over this crawl or, the, or and most of the time even a color. It's like you put Agreed. it in front of that fish that's eating. He's eating, you know. And uh, dude, you're you're. God, you're so right. I want to, I want to real quick, we're going to skip the middle. We usually hit it, but this actually gets me like, right. We have a new member. What did I miss it? Wait, hold on to Burley 23 months. He says Snorlaxians unite. Great show as always. Sorry for the name change. YouTube banned me for 14 days of changing a name. Triple <laughs> A nerds, smash the like and share uh, or catch a stone cold stunner. I like it. Thank you, DeBurley. Uh, it's got to be like a top five all time uh, Snorlaxer without a question. Um, all right. So this, this kind of gets me into what I wanted to talk about. So you're running a pretty light boat. You're running a pretty tight ship. Whether you're bass fishing or pan fishing, we're talking about two setups usually right yeah so how many so i i used to be like nah, i wouldn't say kitchen sink but more kitchen sink than most people probably like my two terminal boxes i had like all, every hook that i owned was like in those two boxes because so i was like well i can bring it why wouldn't i bring it my boat already weighs 100 pounds just bring everything you have i was like dude, it's been bothering me for forever so i switched last night actually i trimmed that down i probably cut 60 percent of my tackle 
terminal is out of that box. And I organize it all so I know where it's going to be when I need to like sort of refill or whatever. So I've, I've tremendously cut that down. I'm going to cut my plastics down almost hilariously down from like a big, I like actually use a food service tub because it's the most, it yeah. fits within like a centimeter to like what can fit under my seat. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to swap that for maybe two bags. And then, and then I'm going to have like probably two boxes with me. One for jigs and then experimental stuff. And then another box. There's just like generic day box. Like, Hey, I might think these are the things I think I'm going to need for the day. That's probably all I'm going to bring knowing that you're like, okay, I typically don't need that much for Creek fishing and river fishing. What does like a general bat? I'm just going to say bass. Cause that's what a lot of people are here. Actually, I'll say pan fishing. If you're going to do some pan fishing, you're going to target, you're going to target big crappie. Maybe how much stuff. And like, what are you bringing with you? Like volume wise, like what is coming with you in the boat? Um, I, I don't really target crappie a lot. So I don't All right, know. So we'll go, we'll going, go. The biggest, the you're, you're going for bull bluegill. You're going to try and catch like yeah. the biggest bluegill that you can find. Uh, if I'm just going for like that, like just, I will have, I mean, most of the time I, I have a, I have a wading bag. That's like this big, yeah. yeah, like three packs of hooks, four or five packs of little soft plastics, a few different sizes and, you know, extra line for leader. If I'm yep. using braid, maybe two different setups. Like one with two pound line, one with four pound, or, or one with braid and a little four pound leader. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I I go really small. I like uh, Ethan's got those mule. Uh, I think it's the minnow. That's like a one point two. That minnow is so like, sick. I love that yeah. minnow. Bobby Garland has one that's a uh, itty bit. It's like the same. It's it's real the itty thin. bitty or itty bitty. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's called itty bitty. And yeah. uh, there's there's two different ones, but. Uh, like the downsides, like I always bring those. Bring those on the tiny little. I got some one sixty fourth ounce jig heads. They're like smaller than the trout magnet ones. Yep. Uh, but trout magnet stuff like that. I'll, I'll I sometimes I'll just grab a trout magnet kit or the little pack. Oh but yeah. Like downsides on something that small can make such a big difference rather than something that's a quarter inch bigger. So like I I will bring the smallest stuff to see if they're very finicky, and then I'll bring it like the biggest thing is like a two inch. Bobby Garland or two inch swim the bait. The biggest is a two inch. Uh, I'm pan fishing, yeah. I like uh, it. Today I used a, I used a, I caught a bunch of skipjack and one white bass, um, at, at the <laughs> lake where the wind was blowing. Yeah, so it was ridiculous. But and um, I was using a little, uh, little Bobby Garland, two inch, uh, what are they called? It was like a chartreuse, and I'm just working it and cut that. And and I've used that to catch like two and three pound bass. And big white bass and stuff like that. That that size just so easy. Ethan's so Ethan's morning dawn that like uh purple pink. That's he calls it. Um, uh, what's wrong with me? I'm gonna lose my mind because I'm can't remember it right now. The, uh, oh my god, it's like right on the tip of my tongue. So his morning dawn color. Um, that minnow. I rig it vertically, and I rig it actually. I I love his hooks, but when I'm in St. Clair and I know there's big bass around, there's a Dakota Sunrise. Thank you, Chas. Uh, that's the color. They uh, Eagle Claw makes like a V-shaped hook um, where it's got like a really like V-shaped bend to it. And it's got this really aggressive hook keeper on it. But it's perfectly shaped for that minnow. It fits right inside the body. And I use the the 2.2 and I put it on a 164th and I, I or a 132, one of the two, depending on what's going on. They have a green pumpkin head or a black, and I swear to the Lord, I have caught more species of fish in bright, sunny days on that combo that I, if I don't go catch 10 fish, I get, I'm confused. I'm like, what? Yeah. I don't know what happened. Something, the fish are ill. I'm cursed. Like, I did I use up all my, like, something ha something's wrong. Like, I did something wrong. The universe is against me. Because it just, like, I... Well, I did like a jet ski video and I was like, I'm just going to see how many species I can catch. I'll see if I can get five. I caught six species in 35 minutes. I actually yeah. had free time to go fish. It was like, yeah. and I never changed. I did not only did I not change the lures, I didn't change the hook and I didn't change the plastic. It is amazing what you can get away with. And I feel like when I looked back at all the stuff that I was bringing with me in my boat, even though I could, and it was kind of nice sometimes I was like, I used 20% of that. Yeah. Really, I mean, like those bags remained untouched, almost all of them. I'm like, I could have gotten away with 20% of this, 
been happier, been way more confident because I'm like, well, I don't have 16 different worms to look through. I got two, you know, flipping baits. I don't flip. Why am I bringing this? I don't need that. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like it was, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, like I have I, to, I'm faster. So I have the things that people talk about. Like I have no idea how to do those. I'll I mean, do what I know. <laughs> I mean, like I can flip and like, it's possible, but like, but do I need to have it with boat me every time I go out? Yeah. I certainly don't. So that's what actually one of my big goals this year, the video Jeff was talking about that I set up is actually me just getting down to like that 20% and then having a bag that I'm like, okay, here's fun fishing stuff that I'm going to either. Cause the big part of our channel is we want to learn. So like, I do want to learn how to get better at flipping heavy cover. So maybe for that day, I'm like, this will be the thing that I'll take with me. Right. Um, or maybe ultralight Carolina rig. I want to mess around with that this year. Okay. I'll bring that little kit, but like, it's not coming with me every day. It's not living in the boat. I've got maybe my, that again, 10, 20%. I'm going to get everything else out of the boat. I'm going to live in that 10, 20%. I'm kind of excited about it. It's a big change for me. I like to, um, I, I've made several videos and, I, and, I'll, and I'll do several as soon as it gets warm enough where I can like make a video where anybody, you can just go to the creek. And I always say, if you take the less, less stuff you take, the more fish you're going to catch. And that's, that's like my motto or not mm-hmm. motto, but like, it's something no, I, yeah. I believe at, and I, I believe that with rod and reels too. I, I, I watch these guys. And I'll, I'll take them with me. Like, hey, we're going to go wade this creek. You know, maybe we're just going to go a couple miles or something like that. And they got three rods. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, we're going fishing, not carrying rods. Because I'm moving. <laughs> we're going I, rod I, carrying. <laughs> I don't stop moving. I cast and move. Cast and mm-hmm. move. And I'm always casting in front of me, way out there. And I and every time I think, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to bring a smaller rod and then a heavier rod. I regret it every time. Every single like, time. Yeah, like just pick one and then just you just and then and then pick one rod then pick the lures that match that rod. Don't bring everything else. Three I've never instead. wet weighted and been happy about having two rods. I've never honestly bank fishing, even bank fishing, I get upset with two rods because I'm just gonna leave the one. Yeah. I'm gonna be like, oh juice, 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 hit the next pocket. Juicy, juicy, juicy. Oh, that looks so good. What and also I'm like, shit, where's my rod? It's like I'm back. I'm yeah. halfway a mile that way, and I can't find it. I'm like, it's a black rod. What am I doing? Like it's a it's a hundred percent true though, but like you, it's nice to have sometimes. But like, no, man, I dude, it's so true. What's up, Charles? In a world, you know, in a world where you watch, you can watch. I watch these videos all the time, YouTube videos. These are the lures you need. These are the lures you need. These are the lures you need. It's like, don't. If you want to just have fun, and fishing is about having fun. Like, unless you're like, all you do is I, I, I do kayak tournaments, but when I go out in the kayak tournament, I still want to have fun. Like, I'm not going out there to ideally (laughs) (laughs) we're trying anyways yeah i just like take just get a few things that you're knowing how to use and that's it and i would agree i think i would totally agree and that's why i want to get down to that 10 20 percent and then anything else is like i just want to learn because i do appreciate people who are like i guess maybe that's because i figure i found out like that's who i am whenever there's something that i don't know how to do like i kind of want to at least do it one time and see if it becomes like a confidence lure for me because i've had it happen where i'm like the the i think the free rig is like a really good example i like heard about it i was like sounds kind of cool it's like a carolina rig but up close but it's kind of like a texas rig like this is cool i better try it flipped it out there i had i had this one hook set like changed my life i cast it out there i was like i know there's a fish here and like i was trying other stuff i had the ultra out couldn't do it i was like i know there's a fish here I flip, I flip the free rig out there first time, I let it go. I let the line out. I'm like, hmm. And then I'm talking to some, I talk about David and I look up and then all of a sudden I'm like, the line's moving out. I'm like, reel down. I look, it, I felt like a TV commercial, right? Or like, I felt like I was watching a pro reeled it down. Boom. Like this big, huge, like bleh, big fish just almost bent out a worm hook. It was like, it was the coolest thing. And it like changed my life. I was like, now I feel like if someone handed me, a rod and was like this is all you could fish with i'd be like cool i'm good i like i appreciate and i like that's what i like to do and and a lot of times on our channel we'll like do unboxings and gear reviews and we're always talking about like the newest thing that comes out the goal for us is not to be like well everyone needs to have everything i think it's more about like i like it when people have that moment like i'll never forget i told jeff i was like use a weightless fluke he goes out use a weightless fluke has like the best day he's ever had and now he's like well i'll throw a weightless fluke i'm like you see, you see, and I'm not saying it's going to be like that for everyone, but maybe I make a video and I'm like, Hey, things to try this spring, try a two treble, two inch jerk bait instead of the three inch three, see how that goes for you. And all of a sudden someone buys one, the one I talked about, they try it. I'm like, and it becomes like, now it's their thing. They only have four things, but like, that's one of them. I just think that would, I think that's really cool. Right. There was. 
Perfect. So, uh, yep, mainstream fishing, member for four months, barely bunch of elite. Thank you, brother. He says, here for the long run. Uh, we salute you. And then we always salute Ramon Outdoors, uh, one of the ultralight homies that's always hanging out. $5 for the super chat. Thank you, brother, very much. And the question he had was, what's your favorite color Bronco blade? He says, mine is gold. Hands down, it's caught me the most fish. Have you used the Bronco blade? Have you seen it? Do you know about it? What do you think? Yeah, I... I, did, I saw it come out whenever, you know, la last week. So I yeah. ordered some right away. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't got them in yet. I got them in here. I think the one that I, I think, and I say I think, right? Because I haven't fished them yet. We're not there yet. We're about to get to open water where we can really do our thing. I think the one that I'm going to be reaching for the most is the chartreuse. So you got four options. Silver, gold, uh, the chartreuse. And then it's a red, but it's kind of an orange. I think the chartreuse is going to be the one because for me, uh, I will be using that in like the muddiest water on like the nastiest days and I'll be using it to grab pike and bass. And I just, I feel like that's when I actually have the hardest time with the ultralight gear is when I'm looking for like, like I'm kind of, I have to search, but I don't do a lot of searching with those baits. Like I don't do a lot of bank beating. I do a lot of like really targeted stuff. This is going to let me in nasty water still have a lot of success with the same setup. And so that is what I think I will like the best um but there's no wrong answer i mean it's just you know it's yeah. whatever you think but that's the one i think that i'm gonna be like nasty water really churned up i'll get that chartreuse blade out there a little colorado is gonna give me the vibe but also that big bright color i'm like i think that might be the winner for me yeah i, I always gravitate to the gold you know, oh, I don't yeah. know but like uh i i don't use a lot of the like that type of lure a lot i'm like i don't know why like why don't i use like it a anymore? beetle spin yeah and so I'm like, I'm excited to like try to like get back into using those. I'm like, I don't know why I don't do these. Dude, uh, like I, you were talking about a trout magnet. That's like a beetle spin match made in heaven. Yeah, it is. Dude, that's you're going to I think you'd be really happy. I think it's right up your alley. That's like just yeah. waiting for like a four or six pound leader and just waiting to catch some fish with it. I feel like I, I, I probably everybody does this. All fishermen like you go in cycles. It's like. Like I, it's certain. Like I, I know a rooster tail works, and I've caught so many fish. It's like I never pick one up. I'm like, why don't I? When's use the last it? time you grabbed it? I, I, why do I not use this? And then I got a whole. So it's I, got like, a, I go in these yeah. circles of lures. Like I have like fifty rooster tails. I got like the big black and silver all the way down to like I love my favorite one. Probably my favorite spinner of all time is the ultralight one that they make with like the two spoons on either side where it's like bent. Yeah. It's the easiest spinning thing on the planet. And like when you're like doing this little tiny choked uh, rainbow trout fishing, which is we have some spots out here for brown and rainbows. Nothing beats it. There's nothing better. That and like the ultralight cast king, uh, the spoon, the silver one, because it looks like a minnow when you move it. And then when you dot, when you drop it, it just like does this amazing shimmy on the way down. Those two lures, I haven't tied one on in three years, but they used to be like if someone came up and asked me like, well, if I needed to go catch a trout, what would I? I'd be like, "There's nothing else. Just yeah. go to the store, get two of these, and you won't need to do anything else. You're done. Have a nice day. You're welcome. Thank me later." But like, I haven't tied one on like three years. What are you gonna do? I, yeah. I dude, that's so <laughs> so right. All right, we so we shoot for an hour. We're over an hour. We still have to do what I'm assuming everyone is here for, which is the fun questions in the end. And the giveaway. So we are gonna do. We are still gonna do the giveaway. Charles, did you leave? Okay, we're still here. Um, so the I'll go, so the way that we typically do this, the way that we do our giveaways, is I have some fun questions for us. They're not serious, but you have to provide an answer of some sort. And while we're doing that, uh, we're gonna let chat do the giveaway. So if you'd like to be entered in the giveaway portion, all you have to do is type something in the chat window. Get your digits out. As a watcher, as a viewer, right now. Type something, and you are going to be your entered to win. Do we have, Chaz, do we have the count? Do we hit 125? Yes. All right. Be prepared for the cameras to get weird, but ignore that. Chaz is going to do his wizardry, uh, which is what he does so very well, the Wizard of Chaz. Um, but yes, yeah, same, same deal as always, guys. Start chat. I already see it right now. We see the chat, chat, chat. That's what we like to see. So you guys are all entered. Uh, I think the first one we're going to do is a $25 gift card. Uh, so start chatting. We're going to ask some questions, and then you'll see instructions on the screen uh, if you are the winner. All right. 
So I like this one. We already we kind of tackled a little bit. We asked you about best footwear. We asked you about like what are you wearing when you go wade fishing. I'm gonna twist it just a little bit. I'm gonna say what is your recommended best footwear for kayak fishing in a creek? What would you recommend someone would get? What are you wearing? Uh, well, if I'm in a creek, I plan to step out. So if I'm half, I'm, I'll be half half walking the creek and half in the kayak probably if it's something that skinny. And I'll probably just wear my um. I got these shoes. I got them last year. They're Chodas, and they're called Hybrid 800s. Hold on. Hold on. Chodas? Yeah. Like C-H-O-D-A-S? Yeah. Uh, C-H-O-T-A. Oh, I got you. All right. I'm looking at them right now. What are they called? Uh, they're like they're called Hybrid 800, I think, or like HBD 800. Or I'm going to find them. I'll find them. Like that. I'll find them. Um, now, I'm, but, now, I'm, now, I'm, now I'm interested. You got me hooked. I've I've worn like I have there's a ton of shoes out there and I, and that's another thing where I'm like I feel like I'm lacking and I should know more about like all these different <laughs> shoes but I just can't I just want to go buy everything and then half of, I wear a size 15 foot so oh, half God. of them don't have my size so what it's like, the world I'll I'll like find these shoes and I'm like oh I'm getting those and I'm like oh they don't they don't wear that make that size that's BS that, that's a that, that's part of the problem but so what are the what are the chodas though like what are they like and what's the essence of them it's like it's a boot um comes up to your calf like a like a high top oh, kind of okay um it's got vents like down the side uh, they're, they're dumping all the water that comes in through them it drains very fast and that's the main thing because i i'll wait and i got i got we got so many mountain streams where i'm i'm walking and waiting and then i have to get up on a trailer or hike up the hill to get back on a trail and walk two miles so I'll, yep. I'll i want something to comfortable i can get in and out of the water and they are very comfortable so far, it's the best thing I have found so far. That Lace up. up. Uh, no, they got they got um the boa thing um, where you pull it and it's tight. Yeah, it's it's like a stretchy cord or whatever. Oh, so it's like can, a slip on. Yeah, pretty much. Oh. Pretty easy to get on, and then it's got it's got like the top like a the top four or whatever, just like a strap around this like bungee. All right. Tighten the bungee down. I'm gonna so, I'm I'm probably them. gonna end up with a pair of these. I've worn them with socks. I've worn them in waders. I've worn them with like neoprene socks or okay. wool socks or whatever you want to do. But you got to wear uh, a sock though. You're not going to barefoot it. You're going to just wreck them. They're going to be like, they're going to get stanky. Uh, they'll rub your, you know, if you can't, you can't, and not in the water, you'll, your feet will wear out. Wear, wear them right socks. out. So I run, I run a Danner, uh, which is like, they make like hiking shoes, like higher end hiking shoes or whatever. Um, I got them for half off. It was like an old color. It's called the River Comer. It is a tennis shoe, but it's like a mock and it drains super well. It doesn't dry out super fast, but it drains really, really well. And it's just like, it's kind of got a, like an elastic, you know, type uh, fit. Like you slip it on kind of like a sock, but it's got like a legit sole, a Vibram, like legit sole. And, uh, and then it's got like a shoelace, like, but it's only, it's like really light. It's not heavy duty. Those are amazing. Huge fan, especially for kayak fishing. What's the name? Of, I'm writing that down. I'm going to check those out. What are they I'll called? I'll tell you. It's, they're made by Danner, D-A-N-N-E-R, and it's called the River Comer. Now, the thing that gets okay. tough about these is if you wear a sock, you're going to be like in heaven. But if you don't wear a sock, you are going to occasionally get some like debris in there because they're low. They're really low. They're like a yeah. low top tennis shoe. Um, I never wear a sock. Jeff always wears the neoprene sock. Uh occasionally i'll get some stuff in there i find that the more i wear them i just don't care anymore unless like a big rockets in, which is very rare so i don't know for what it's worth but it's the vibram sole is really nice anytime i go on a traveling trip that's the only pair of shoes i bring so like if i'm going fishing and like i know and be fishing a lot i can just wear that and i'm totally fine in the from the airport all day walking all the way into the river so i love those they're not cheap though they're like 100 plus dollars i think retail we got them for 75 i think because i've they were just like randomly on sale and I found them. And I immediately texted Jeff. I was like, buy these now. <laughs> um, but other, yeah. Other things I'll wear. I got some, yeah. like, you can just get really cheap water, water shoes, like yes. foam bottom ones for like yes. $30. And those mm -hmm. are, those are pretty good too. As long as you're not walking a ton. I like, I like wearing those. Hundred, or just go barefoot. Yeah. I can, dude, I, in the kayak, I'll go barefoot in the kayak most times. And that's why I just say Crocs for most people. Cause you probably already got something like that. But if you're in the river, though, I am getting out. And it, just even yeah. in an emergency situation, I'm probably going to have to get out, or I should. And so for me, I I like to have, I like to have wading boots, some kind. That's a big one. Yeah, if I know I'm gonna, like sometimes you go down rapids, you got to step out. Like whoa, that that looks. Let me get out real quick because I don't know what it is. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you definitely sometimes you want to have shoes on for those situations. 
It's a river adventure. It's a creek. It's a creek fishing adventure. It's not a creek fishing like sit back and relax. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is important. You got to be ready for the adventure part. It's half the title. Um. All right. Should we, Charles, should we do the giveaway? Should we just run it right now? I think we're gonna do the giveaway, guys. This is for a twenty-five dollar gift card. Good at Monster Bass on everything except for a subscription. And it doesn't cover shipping, so be prepared to spend the five or eight dollars or whatever it is on shipping. But that's twenty-five dollars of lures. They got a whole ton of stuff, and actually, I know they got all the stuff that was in the Strike King box this month, and it's all pretty cheap. So there's some ton of good stuff out there. What? Wait till Friday's Charles? Because of free, the free bait Friday. Yeah, free bait Friday. Good point. Wait till Friday, you get an extra good deal. But this is a twenty-five dollar gift card. Get it, Monster Bass. We will send you the code again if you're in the chat. You're already uh, you're already entered to win. We're Charles is gonna roll a name and he's gonna tell us who it is in three, two, one. Who's the winner, Charles? Lindsay. Oh wait, R U P. All right, Lindsay Rupp, you are the winner. We're gonna give her a second. There's a 15 second delay. She gets a grace period, but you got like a minute, minute 30. If you don't say at least hi in a minute, minute 30, I'm I'm giving it away to somebody else. We're sharks out here. People are eager to win that one. So, Lindsay, we're looking for you. Oh, she just said I'm here. She's a winner. All right, Lindsay, follow the instructions on screen. Charles is going to be looking out for you. I have another couple of quick questions here. Again, we call it slow rolling thunder. It used to be the lightning round, but it takes like three times longer than it should. So we got to the slow rolling thunder here. Um, what is the worst fish? I'm using air quotes for anyone that's listening to this as a podcast. What is the worst fish to catch in the river, in your opinion? Like, what do you hook and you're like, have the least amount of excitement about? Oh, um, it's a multi species angler. Man. This is a tricky question. This yeah, is tricky. The targets usually the, uh, the, the fish you don't want to catch are usually the bigger ones. But if you're just like catching fish, those are the ones you enjoy, like a catfish yeah. or, or drum. Uh, in a kayak, a gar, um, gar Good are probably the worst. Point. Those are, those are, those are, I've, I've gotten cut on those from those and, I've come real close to worse things because they can they can be really calm and then they can shake. You can, if you have to get them in your kayak, just holding them, they can scrape you. I, I still I had a cut right there for a long time um, because their the way their Slime. scales are, the way their scales are, they can just scrape you just holding on to them. Yep. Um, How big and, do yours get in Tennessee though? Because we have gar. They're not the alligator gar. They're just regular gar. Yeah. Most of the ones that I get are... 20 22 inches but they get up quite a bit bigger but that's just like the normal size that i'll run into especially fishing ultralight bass tackle i'll run into that 20 24 inch size range what do you guys usually see probably the same like um i we i mean they can be five foot um yeah. i've seen some but they're not they're pretty rare i got some really cool video last spring going down when they were spawning and I, they were, video? there were so many of them it was crazy I have a video where I was catching bass uh, at our place in Canada. I'm standing in the water. I'm like ankle deep in water and I'm catching bass and they're all cut up. I mean, they're shredded. I got one. It's literally, he's got a huge cut down the middle of him. The top of his back's missing like two spines and I'm holding them and I look right down and there's like four garf, like right uh -huh. there. I mean, I, I could have grabbed him out of the water. Yeah. It's that no, no lie. And I threw him back. I was like, good luck, bud. You're gonna need it, like, I, yeah, because they were they were spawning, and when they come up to spawn, they take those like really hot water areas. So this is like a really clear bank, sandy bottom yeah. with like a rock impoundment, and they were just loaded. I mean, yeah. there's 30, 40 of them right there. It's freaky. They were they were doing that, and I put my hand on the biggest one, and and it was like it was all the way open, and I just like put my hand on it because it was in like a half a foot of water. Yeah, and I was afraid to like grab the whole thing because it was hundred percent. And, um, but I guess, but it was pretty cool, but yeah, but a lot of times it's, you know, those 18 to 20 inch ones that will get hooked some weird way Yeah, and you gotta, they don't do this them. either. You'd think it would just be side to side. They like go up and down yeah. back and forth and all around. Like there's no right. They're way worse than a pike. Um, we got long nose insane. spotted gar and spotted gar. Those are two main ones we have. We have short nose that are around. I caught one, but we don't have oh. alligator gar, um, around here. Oh, I thought you would have. Is that like further south? More south? I mean, Got they it. may be like in the other side of Tennessee and in, in Mississippi. Yeah. Huh. Um, I'm on the mountain side. There ain't nothing, nothing over here. Uh, on the other side, of the east, the other side, of the west of Tennessee, they might they might have some. Uh, I, I, they're mainly set, so further south. Gotcha. I would say my answer a lot of times would be catfish, but after a lot of years, especially medium sized like ones, 
you just as long as you're willing to grab them from underneath and get the spine in between your thumb and then in between your ring like they're actually really easy to handle and they're pretty yeah. docile like you get them there and then once you, i just use the pliers and to unhook them because usually when i get them they're dug in um if you're comfortable with that i'd probably take that one right off the list they're not that bad the one that's brutal especially in the springtime is burbot because we'll get burbot that come all the way up into the uh, like a dogfish i don't know you guys probably don't have them they're super cold water fish. On meat eater. <laughs> yeah, exactly 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 I've never, never um, seen one other, but... dude they're insane and they are what uh, jeff and i had the almost an identical experience which is crazy first one i ever caught ultralight fishing creek fishing i was in knee deep water i saw the fish i didn't know what it was i never even heard of it to be honest with you yeah. threw everything at it just just hucking stuff in it. it it could not care less i'm like what is this i thought it was a stick but i'm like it's swimming i know it's there i'm only five feet from this thing and i flipped a little uh number two meps and i didn't i like i went too high it went way up and so i had all this line out smacked the water scissor down right in front of it it like slurped it up and i was like oh and so i kind of reeled in set the hook real light because i was like i had all the slack out yeah. that thing went absolutely insane like at the mo like it, it calm beautiful spring was immediately exploded and it was a war zone that fish went freaking nuts it took me probably two minutes to reel it in just to like, get it in because it would just go and then when i got it again i didn't know what it was i never even heard of this fish it's like an eel it's like a it's like a nasty looking toothy fish but then the back end of it looks like an eel and it wrapped around me and i was like ah. uh, i did not yeah. know what i was doing <laughs> i had no idea what i was in for and ever since then, that's probably in the river. It's probably one of the worst fish that I would want to grab. But I still like it. Like I would target them. But if I on the hierarchy, they'd be way at the bottom. Ugh, ugh. All right, Charles. Did we get Lindsay? Did we get her in here? All right. I had two other questions. We never hit 125 people. I had two other topics we never got to. So here's what I'm gonna do for everyone on the show. We're gonna respect everybody's time. We're gonna respect the fact that Jeff, we lost him our friend in battle is gone um but john thank you so much for being with us this is a ton of fun so i will say we have got to get you back on because i have some other questions we got to talk a little more creek awesome. fishing tactics we got to do yeah. it um but seriously sincerely thank you so much for your time this was a ton of fun um where can people find you where should people go look for you if they haven't found you already yep creek fishing adventures youtube instagram facebook pretty easy to find there and we will put them on our socials. And if you're listening to this podcast, all of his information will be down in the show description. So please go check him out. Uh, you'll find him catching big fish on light line, which is something that we really appreciate and respect around here. So again, thank you so much. This was a ton of fun. Uh, Y'all, if you haven't checked us out, please go do so. Uh, YouTube, Instagram, the whole deal. You'll find us at uh, Aggressively Average Anglers. And uh, other than that, I don't think we know who's going to be on next week but I'm pretty sure we're going to try and find a guest. But if we don't, we'll have another tactic like we usually do. So thanks everyone for, thanks for, oh, we, we have a members only coming up March 14th. That is a Tuesday. Uh, but sincerely, thank you everyone for listening to the show. Uh, have a great week and we will see you, we'll see you on the next one. Chaz, would you please do me a solid and take us out? Took a swing at a wrecking ball and I prayed for my downfall and I found a way Reconcile, cause in my heart it's not worthwhile. It's a bloody battlefield where some go down, others heal. In the end, it's all the same. All you can do is play the game.